Hey guys, it's SD, your host of the Life Fix Relationship Podcast, where people with all sorts of backgrounds, challenges, and life experience show us how they make their relationship extraordinary. Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. I'm super excited for today's episode for two reasons. First of all, I've been getting many requests to have couples on together, not just one partner sharing about the relationship, but both of them, so that way you could get both sides of the conversation. And today we've got an amazing couple on. So that's first of all. And the second reason why I'm really excited is because of the topic we're about to discuss. Anyone who knows me knows that I love deep conversations. I love connecting with people on a real deep level and in order to have an amazing relationship I truly believe you need to have those deep conversations yes you need to check in and have those hi how are you you have to have the communication about who's going to pick up who and who's going to the grocery store but there's nothing like those deep conversations now this couple has created a really cool game to have those deep conversations more often. Thank you so much, Diana and Robert Indries, for being here. I'm super excited to talk to you. You want to start by telling us a bit about yourself, what you do, and what your relationship is like. I think something that is uh, shocking to both of us is that we really enjoy each other's presence a lot. <laughs> and, and we really enjoy having activities together and, and spending time together. Everything that has to do with our relationship right now it makes us think of how could or why do people settle for anything less than that it, it's really for us I think it, it has to do as well with the unwillingness to compromise in the past right we've been in various other relationships and and we've been let's say how should I put this like flirted with <laughs> with by other people I said well no I, I don't think this will work right or, or maybe you know this won't be at the level at, at which you know I'd, I'd like it to be. Now that we've found each other and, and we, we get to experience life together, we truly feel that together we do so much more, we, we're so much happier, we accomplish so much more, and we grow so much faster as people. It's, it's surprising and exciting at the same time. I would also add to that the fact that we had, you know, some previous relationships which weren't so great. We kind of learned and we matured and we understood what we actually want out of a relationship. So just before we met, we actually took this commitment very seriously to not settle for anything less because now I know exactly what I want. So I think it all feeds into that as well. Yeah, that's a really interesting point that you make. I don't think people have to go through the whole process of being in relationships with other people to know what they want that's the way you found it and good thing you really eventually got to it but I think if people sit down and make that list they really go into themselves realize who they are what they want what they need in life then they could get that also yeah. exactly I mean it's funny that you mentioned a list because I actually made the list uh, about a couple of months before I actually met Robert and that was my point when I actually got very clear on what I want and I said I'm not gonna settle for anything less mm -hmm. I mean so many people make lists and then they just throw it out of the window just because they found someone who is okay-ish whereas I would say no unless there are certain things on that list that you don't really mind if that person has or doesn't have but whatever is important put them on a list and do not settle for anything less yeah exactly you have like your priorities and I'm like your nice twos I would like if I would have this yeah <laughs> so how long do you know each other for three, three years. years yes yeah. And how has your relationship changed? You came in the beginning knowing what you want, being committed to it, but how has it changed over time? Well, I think something that has changed for us quite a bit since we've met is at the beginning, we had sort of a, a fairy tale of what an amazing relationship looks like, right? Because you read about it, you see it in movies, you, you imagine it. But then when you actually get to witness it and you witness it day to day to day, something that tends to happen happen to you, at least that's what happened to us, is that you become more and more grateful and more and more at peace with yourself and, and you know, with life and like struggles happen, you know, regardless, like it's not like life struggles go away, but it's like they are not important anymore. Um, they, they, they have everything dissipates, you know, 8 or 9 p.m. whenever we go to bed, you know, and we talk and we cuddle and we just stay there and it's like, it doesn't matter what happened today. It, it, this is just so, so beautiful. And then you wake up 
with the same person next to you, you know, and during the day you message or you talk and so on. And what has changed is the level of intensity. So excitement and, you know, that sheer love bird love from the beginning has gone from excitement to gratitude, right? I feel that's something that has changed a lot. Also, one thing that we don't tend to learn from movies or romantic books or whatever is the work that actually goes into having a great relationship. Mm -hmm. Because you can actually find a great partner, yes, but then having a great relationship, that's something different. You have to actually put in the work for that because great relationships, you cannot just find them, you know, on the streets or somewhere and then just have them like that. And also relationships take constant work. And the more you work at it, the better it is. And when I say work, you know, most people tend to shy away because they think oh my it's a lot of effort and I have to think about it's not like that when you actually put in work for your relationship it's actually fun you actually enjoy doing that so although I still call it work it's not tedious it feels like you're moving you know and you're building something and and that's how it should feel you know you should always feel that you're building something yeah it's you want to do it you love your partner you're in this relationship you know where it's going like you said it's not tedious it could sometimes get challenging, but you're doing it for a reason. So what advice or tips would you give to someone to work on their relationship? Well, I think we have quite a few. Uh, one of them is, is 100% that they should understand that there is no such thing as stagnation, right? So your relationship is either getting worse or it is getting better, right? It's one or the other. So you need to consciously decide every single week that you are going to make your relationship better somehow. When I say every single week, some people might say, well, that's a lot of effort. (laughs) I mean, you're going to live with the person, you know, for 50 or 100 years, you know, or or whatever. Might as well give it the the level of, of seriosity required, right, or importance from that standpoint. And every week means 50 something times per year, right? So, in most cases, let's say if, if you have a vice like, you know, watching the news or, or playing video games or whatever, something tells me is you spend much more time doing that, you know, than anything else. So if like 50 hours of playing video games or, or, you know, going out to beers or whatever it is, your vice, you know, or your hobby, you just think, well, your relationship has to be like one of those priorities, one of those hobbies, one of the things you focus on. When we say you focus on it every single day, week, it's more of the consistency than the level of effort, right? Because for example, this week I might buy Diana flowers, you know, next week I might leave her a little love note. The week after that, you know, we might go, you know, on a city break, you know, to someplace. And it doesn't need to be complicated. It can literally be small things, but every single week you think of how I make my relationship better. And part of that is also giving feedback many times, right? Could you please do this? Could like, could we talk about this or that or the other? And as well, you know, positive feedback, such as I really enjoyed when you did that, right? Or I really liked how you said this or did that. So do you do these things together, or discuss what you're going to do that week together? Or is it each one of you separately deciding how you're going to make your relationship better? We are actually at a point where we just constantly work at it. Like, I, I don't think, you know, people should just discuss what we're going to do. If you have the urge of doing something, just do it. Like, in a moment, morning if I have the urge just to you know cuddle extra five minutes that's what I'm gonna do if during the day if I'm at home I'll just you know pass him by I'll just give him a random hug or um, you know if I'm out of the house and he has you know, a bit of spare time, he'll just run out to get some flowers by the time I get back. So it's nothing planned. I mean, we plan the bigger things as of, you know, going somewhere together or going out to a restaurant or, you know, for a city break, as he mentioned. So, you know, where you have to actually uh, match the schedules, yes, we do discuss Mm -hmm. those. But the small, uh, you know, acts of like kindness and gratitude towards each other that we do on a daily Mm -hmm. basis now, we just do them, you know, and then, and the thing is, what people don't realize is that the more more you do them the more they actually become a habit and you end up just doing them and you don't even consider them an effort at all anymore it's just something that makes you happy to do them because you see your partner you know being happy for you doing them and then that just you know fuels you to actually do more of that mm-hmm. yeah yeah it really becomes a part of you in the beginning you're really conscious of it but afterwards it's just like you wash the dishes or you throw your plate in the garbage you're giving compliments giving hugs finding ways to make your partner happy And I think something that's very crucial, very, very crucial. I've dealt with this, I think, my entire life, and I think most people do. You get like a tingling of, I miss her, or 
you know, I, I love her or I'm grateful to have her or whatever. Instantly you get that tingling at one point during the day. If she or he is not close, send them a message immediately. Like do not let that just go away because the bad things will persist, right? If something bad happens, you're going to talk about it. You're going to discuss it. You know, it's, it's not going to end. You know, just it's not going to go away. So let's do the same thing with the good things, right? So if I, if I feel grateful, let me tell her, you know, I'm very grateful to, to have met you. And thank you so much for saying yes. You know, I, I still appreciate that every day. You know, so uh, these, these type of things, you know, when they happen, you should tell them. You should say them. And it's the same even with things, with other things outside of the relationship. Like, for example, if you remember you should, I mean, or you're grateful for your one of your parents or, or you should a friend or you really want to do something just get it get it done right then don't let that pass because if you let that those feelings pass it's like you're letting your life pass i don't know how to explain but it's like you're just numb so give yourself the opportunity to live life at its full extent and you will never enjoy life more than when you share it with someone you know and you make someone else's life like totally it. yeah actually i think that when you push it away like you said or you forget about it it's more than just letting life pass it's letting your whole relationship pass because you're not letting them know about it you're not acknowledging it within yourself and you're not really toning in on what it could do for you if we don't focus on the good things as well we end up only focusing on the bad things so you know you end up looking back at the last month for example and all you've discussed were bad things or problems mm -hmm. whereas in that relationship there are so many other things as well not just problems not just issues and mm -hmm. things that need to be sorted out but good things as well so mm -hmm. this is why we actually encourage people to focus on the good things of the relationship too mm -hmm. yeah now you mentioned before feedback how do you go about this so the other person doesn't get hurt and things really work i think key element to that is timing as in to know when is it the perfect time of the day to actually discuss this with your partner and how is your partner feeling right now are they actually in the right state to discuss the feedback or they will just take it the wrong way and they will just you know create a big scene and you know a big argument out of it and with some discussions people feel that timing is never right uh, because it is sort to an extent you know that's true you can pick timing better you know um, many times but what does tend to happen is that let's say you want to you know give them feedback of they don't help around the house right and you want to give them that feedback and so if that's something you want to tell them you literally what you do many times is you put the positive note on it uh, so what we do what we've learned to do is to say things like i would really appreciate it if at least twice a, a week you would wash the dishes i'd really appreciate it if you would do this or that or the other but not in a mean way if if you feel any any sort of negative feelings maybe not hate hate is a, is a bad word but like anger or frustration you know of that and if you feel that whilst you're saying it the other person will feel it as well and will probably get defensive because of it so you really need to not let that emotion guide what you speak so you have the emotion and if it's there then you wait it out you relax and then you tell them when you are you know in a calm state and you can actually have that discussion yeah so like you said it's timing for the other partner and it's timing for you too it's being able to really feel figure out what will be the best so that way you could go and make it work okay so you guys created the better topics card game for couples to have deep dialogue over and over again you want to tell us exactly what it is how you got into it what happened along the way sure one thing that we like right here you know in front of us we have like over 20 games you know tabletop games card games everything we play so many games together and we enjoy it and when we looked at this we're like well we know that one thing or the most important thing that allows us to have the quality of relationship that we have is how often and how deeply we communicate with each other right and so then we've started doing research and we realized that the opposite is also true. In most cases, the worse your relationship is, it is because you talk less and you are more defensive or whatever, right? So we noticed there is a relationship. So I said, okay, well, 
how can we help people have more conversations in a playful way so that they actually look forward to it? So that's how we came up with the idea of creating a real game that you can actually play so that it's fun and you can play it every single week. It took us many months <laughs> to build it and to put everything together. But finally, finally, you know, we got to a, a final stage that we've gotten feedback on from others. We've played ourselves many times and it has really, even to us, we still have conversations that many times we don't expect to have as a result of the game. Yes, we really wanted to focus on the fun element for the game to make it more likely for couples to actually play it. And we also have like different levels of question difficulties. So we have like easier questions such as where would you want to go out next week or something like that. And then we have like deeper questions as well. Like when was it that you needed me most last week? Because there are so many questions. We have over 55 questions in uh, the base deck. People can actually take out the very difficult ones if they find it quite strange at the beginning, you know, to open up straight away. They can start playing with the lighter ones until they get into the habit of actually discussing with each other and playing the game and everything. And then later on, they can actually introduce those as well. You know, so they just progress with this. It, it doesn't mean that they have to just play it straight away as it comes. They can tailor it to their situation. And also with the base game, we have some custom cards which basically allows them to either create their own questions if we haven't thought about them or maybe even rewards because we do have some rewards as well in our cards mm -hmm. So we have added some game-like elements to it and people get to strategize and then win the game. And whoever actually wins the game, they get to choose a reward from the reward deck. So we kind of thought of a lot of elements to it and make it fun and then make couples to look forward to actually playing the game and winning because they will get something tangible at the end of it. That's really cool. So it really makes it into a game and not just conversation. It makes it so much more fun to want to have those conversations. I mean... You want those conversations anyways, but when it's a game, oh, that's so much funner. Now, you want to tell us what conversations you had from those cards? This is maybe random. For example, one of the things we found out with regards to our perfect home, right? Because we have a home right now and, and the game made us discuss about our perfect home. And something we realized is that we would both like um, the moment you come into the house that you have like a um, sort of a square hallway, but like you go into a, a bigger hallway and then there's a bonsai tree, you know, on the other side, like right when you go in, there's like a bonsai tree on something. And we both envisioned it the same way and that's interesting because we never talked to the, you never think to discuss that right we were just playing and what's one element you know of the perfect home you haven't told me about yet i said well the moment i go in i imagine this brownish you know atmosphere very calm like you know and with the bonsai tree right there and so, I, exactly exactly i want the same thing these are just like these fun things because you never discuss normal discussions day to day is are like how was your day has anything happened today you know like very super official questions that you would ask every single day, uh, but they, they don't really add too much value. These questions really make you think, right? And then you find these things out. Also, on a more serious note, there is a question in the deck that says, when was it that you needed some space last week? So I give you some space and um, that actually made me think. And we came up with this plan that on the evenings when he's working longer, I can actually take the evening for myself because I do need some time, you know, just for myself even just to, I don't know, browse the internet or do some online shopping or whatever I want to do without feeling the guilt that, oh my God, I, I feel like I should spend this time with him. So, you know, it's like finding a balance and actually discussing things that, you know, normally don't come up. Yeah, I like that because also that example would eventually come out. You would get frustrated about something, you'd blow up and then, okay, now you have to work through that. Instead, you had the cards, you had the game, you had fun to discussing it and it came up with a solution to it. So while you were making the game and thinking of all the questions, testing and everything, has that changed your relationship at all? Well, it, it definitely told us about what each of us are, are good at, um, how we work, because you don't really know how the other person works until you work with them. 
<laughs> you know, you need to actually work with them. And then you see, well, okay, well, you're like this and, and you're like this. And then you start understanding their professional side or what they do. Because until then, any story from their workplace is their perspective of what happened. That's it. But the moment you actually work with them, say, well, I didn't know how to do that. Well, I explained that yesterday. What do you mean you didn't know? You had enough information, you know, and so on. So it's like you really get to know the other person even more. And I think there is a quote like that. I can't remember who said it, but something like, if you manage to, to work together with someone, then you really have something. <laughs> yeah, you get to see a whole other side of them that you don't usually get to see. Yeah, yeah. Did it put any constraints or difficulties on your relationship? I think it had on several occasions because it's different when you need to put a line between your personal life and, you know, we love each other and so on and so forth, but I really need to get this done by tonight at 8 p.m., right? And so having that level of, let's say... Uh, Boundary. Yeah, and also maturity that you need to get to make the difference and say, look, how much I love you has nothing to do with this. This needs to get done, right? Um, you're tired that's fine next time don't promise you're gonna do it right let's let's adapt let's do let's let's adapt our plans let's do things differently and this goes both ways obviously right so we gave ourselves feedback you do this better you could do this better right but it has put that stress on us that those challenges and i believe those challenges and, and that knowledge of how we, each one of us is is making us stronger right they keep constantly made us stronger we constantly learn more about the other person and we manage to help them i I feel, for example, I have become a much better manager since I, I work with Diana because she can tell me things that, you know, other people would not tell me, right? And on her end, I believe she has become much more courageous since we started working. Because before, she wouldn't take leaps of faith, you know, to do this, to do that, to do the other. And I say, uh, Diana, if you want to achieve things in your life, you need to do it. You need to just get it done, get it done, get it done, right? And stop worrying, stop thinking about about anything else right so we've had many things like yes. this that also we've learned. about accepting feedback and actually listening to feedback without being hurt by the feedback so again as Robert said yes we do love each other and everything but when we work we had to put that line that I still love you although this is your feedback mm -hmm. and is not against you as a person but it's against of what the things that you haven't done and should have done because you promised obviously we, we don't like to be criticized so we have to think of how to actually give that feedback in a positive way and to have positive solutions which most people actually just try to do at work because you're required to do that but when you do that in your relationship as well it will improve drastically and now that it's over after it happened and you took those leaps of faith what does it feel like it feels like a relief that yes he was right and because you know when when you do take that leap of faith you're still scared and to a certain extent terrified even because it's the unknown as especially because this is a domain that I've never worked in. I worked in something totally different. So I'm also very, very happy and surprised. And once you tend to go through like a rough patch and you come out on the other side, you tend to forget the bad things and you just focus on the very nice result. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, yes, there have been times with tears and everything and anger and, you know, arguments and everything, but we passed that. And now that we've been through it and, you know, the product is out there now and everything, it was worth it actually, you know, especially when we see the amazing feedback that we had from everyone so although it was challenging and this is I think with most things in life and in any relationship though it might be challenging at that point in time just keep your eyes on the prize basically which is either improving your relationship or doing a project together with your mm -hmm. partner or whatever it is it's worth it to battle through it but to also keep in mind mm -hmm. to take care of each other in the meantime and mm -hmm. don't be mean to each other mm -hmm. and this is something that we had to keep in mind and again when we gave feedback and we accept feedback we had to be careful of how we are actually speaking to each other and be mindful of that because you know obviously I can still be honest with him and tell him look I don't like this and then I can tell him why and then he can accept that without feeling hurt that maybe I don't like whatever he's done so you can still be honest but you know you have to be mindful to be kind mm -hmm. when you give feedback yeah, yeah. And, I, and I think something that you do not understand until you experience it enough times is that you go through difficulty you know it's challenging it's painful and you pass through 
it, on the other end, you look back and like, what was my problem? <laughs> you know, why, why, why didn't I do that? Why was that so hard? I beat myself up for an entire week, you know, and it's so easy. But you evolve and now you have a different perspective of the same thing. So that's why many times you look on your past and like, well, these good things happened. You forget your struggle because you had to struggle to pass and evolve and, and get that perspective and get that to that level of maturity. And when you get there, then you look back and like, well, that was childish, <laughs> you know, or, or that, I, I shouldn't have done that. You know, it's, it's somewhat similar to when you do like a very crazy workout in the gym. You go to a class, it's very intense. Whilst you're in it, you're thinking, I'm crazy. I want to give up. I want to go home. I want to just rest. I don't want to do this. This hurts. That hurts. Everything hurts. But by the end of it, you're like, oh my God, I've done it. You know, it's like, it wasn't that bad, was it? Like, well, I've done it. And was I can do it again minutes. right now. <laughs> <laughs> was the problem it's just 45 minutes and it felt like eternity whilst i was doing it <laughs> yeah so let's just end off what's the best relationship advice would you give to someone who wants to have an extraordinary relationship i think the best best advice that we remind ourselves of and we give each other is you need to set aside time every single week block time right whether that's date night or anything you want you need to set aside time to do something engaging with your partner and when i say engaging I do not mean Netflix or, or Disney or whatever, right? I mean, sit down, have a conversation. You know, With your card. Some, yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally, that's one of the activities you can do, right? And so we are not saying that's the only thing you can do, but anything, you know, that will bring you closer together and will help you engage with each other, right? That's the most important part. We build the cards as a tool, as a means to an end. You use the tool every week to have those conversations, right? And this is why it's so important. Sit down with your spouse, look at each other. If you have nothing to say, <laughs> you know, there's something there, you know, you need to evolve, you need to learn more about, you need to be intrinsically curious. And again, if that's uncomfortable or it's harder, we do have the card game, right? You can get it and then you can play it. And that makes it so much easier. Many times we don't know what to talk about. We just pull out the, the cards, right? And then we have a game play. So cool. Diana, do you have anything to add? I would also say be kind when you communicate with each other because so many people, they have the impression that they talk to each other, but but actually they just criticize each other or argue or whatever. So when one of the partners is criticizing the other one, the other one will most likely either shut down or maybe just go in defense mode and be very defensive and maybe just argue back whatever it is they were arguing about. So other than setting specific time, you know, for each other every week, even if they have kids, especially if they have children, because, you know, how can you actually take care of children and raise them and show them what a loving relationship looks like if you you don't make time for it, you know, to grow your relationship and be generally happy in your relationship. So other than that is being kind to each other and being very mindful of the words you're using to towards each other because it counts a lot and, you know, it can either help growing the relationship or it can help, I wouldn't say murder it, <laughs> but it helps like, you know, destroy uh, the relationship. Destroy it, yeah. yes. Great. Well, thank you so much. It was great speaking with you. Thank you. Likewise, thank you. And good luck with those cards. I love them. Thank you. Thank you so so much. Did you enjoy that episode? Could you do me a personal favor and subscribe and leave a review? It would mean a lot to me. Thank you so much and have an awesome day.